what are what's our next steps? And uh, before we step into uh, design for one interaction, we want to share with you a pattern on uh, how we think when we design for a participatory process or for a participatory meeting. A pattern on how, which different steps or to speak the art of hosting lingo breath do we go through uh, when, when designing for this that has emerged from the field of art hosting. And uh, we start the process or any reason for having a meeting starts with a disturbance in a way. Like it can be a possibility or a need or an assignment or a purpose, but there is something that invites, you might feel um, like uh, there, there is a reality going on uh, that is calling to be dealt with. And the first breath is about this. It's about the call. There is something that is needed to be tended to. And uh, the first breath is this call. And uh, there's a cute little drawing here. But it's this thing. I think you mentioned that, Mary Alice. But, uh, somebody was speaking about somebody should do something about this. And then you might feel that somebody is your name. <laughs> and I've been in that position. And sometimes it's, oh, no, not me. <laughs> but it's like, it, oh, it's me that is supposed to put a stick in the ground and do something about it. And it might be my formal role as well. That, OK, I need to do something about it. Or I've given the assignment to do something about it. And the first breath is about committing to that. <coughs> to find, OK, whose call is this? And uh, when we have a call and we have a stick in the ground, it's a very advanced teaching system here. <laughs> uh, we have the next breath, which is clarify. Because you might, there's a disturbance and it might be huge. The earth is uh, needing our attention because uh, it's falling apart. And you put the stick in the ground, but that's a, a big of a bite to take on. Like, what's the purpose of your stick or this assignment? To clarify and to clarify the core. And there are some things we need to clarify. We need to clarify, is there a calling question? Is there, like, what, what is calling us? What is it that we're going to explore and do something about? Uh, what's the purpose? What's the real purpose? And a purpose uh, that can be collectively shared and can be clear enough that we can gather around it, that would be the thing that will be our guide and leader through this process. So we want to stay in this breath before we have that clarity. And that can take a while. And it can take uh, some processes as well to find this. And uh, when we have that, that's uh, like a Lithuanian a good, good beginning. If we have clarity, we can continue. The next phase with our clarity of purpose is to go into preparation. We talked about in, in uh, the knowledge exhibi exhibition about proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> <laughs> the seven Ps. <laughs> but this, this breath is where we step into designing somewhere in the knowledge expedition about designing from harvest. So what do we want to harvest? from stepping in and organizing this meeting? What do we want to harvest, both intangible and intangible, or strategic and emergent, for the group or for the individual? So it's like knowing what we want in terms of harvest. It's also preparing the actual design of the process. 
And it's what we've also been talking about, the groundwork. It's the art of organizing. So what are we, where are we going to meet? Or what do we need? What kind of space do we need to make this possible? What materials do we need? So it's from the smallest bits to the uh, biggest containers. And so we can step in and make this a good, meaningful process of meeting. And it's also about inviting people. Because here we might be one person here, we form a core team. Like you need, probably need more people, but who's going to be part of this purpose? Here we start to be maybe more people. We presented ourselves in the beginning. We have nine organizers who's been doing the groundwork. And we've been uh, uh, opposing team of uh, eight plus 15. <coughs> so it's like you become more here. And one thing that sometimes is a misunderstanding uh, about participatory work is that we all sit in circle all the time. <laughs> and that everyone agrees, needs to agree on anything or everything. And uh, when, uh, when uh, Volvo, uh, Volvo's uh, like head of intervention came to the organization I was running, to ask for help how they could run their innovation process more efficiently. Uh, they also discovered we don't sit in circle because they saw we got results and in innovation that made money even if it was in arts. Uh, and <laughs> even if it was in arts. Uh, and uh, what we do is that everyone that are involved in a project have a shared purpose. Like the circle <coughs> is for that collective clarity of purpose, but then we break out in triangles to use forms as, as metaphors. Triangles of action. Who's gonna do the uh, organizing, or who's gonna do this? So every, everyone is not working on everything all the time, but all these triangles direct point to the circle. <coughs> and you also, the square symbolizes somebody needs to also hold the whole to see like all these bits, are they, if we go on a meta level or ego perspective, what can we see? So we go out and work from the same clarity so everything can be ready before we enter the meeting. And then we have the actual meeting. <coughs> and uh, that's where we become even more people. <coughs> We might have involved uh, people uh, in clarifying here, or in preparation, and we can have more stakeholders involved there. But when we have a participatory meeting, that's when the participants also show up. And this is where we do the hosting and the harvesting of whatever we design for. And uh, we step into the place and the space that we prepared it for. And this can sound like this works for larger processes, but it can also be in, like, even in two-hour meetings that you're going to have. And this is where we start using whatever method serves, or the World Cafe or Open Space or new methods that can help us open up, emerge, and come to a result or an outcome that is in connection to the harvest that we want to have. And the next breath <coughs> is the harvest. Yes. So we have, we have an outcome here, but we need to, and this sometimes we forget when we think about just planning for design, that we need a breath to also take care of that harvest or that outcome. We need to make sense of it, we need to see what kind of what that what it informs us to do in terms of making decisions about the next wise steps, and uh, see what this collective wisdom or clarity can inform us. So then we need to have the core team and the state, like the the one with mandate as well. Let's take <coughs> care of the harvest, and that's not everyone in the circle again because it's still connected to the same purpose.
Well, it's not, it's not everyone, because sometimes we think that, okay, we all have to make the decisions together. <coughs> but if, if we have a harvest here, which is clarity, like, okay, everything we know to be able to make wise decisions, but we need to look at it. <coughs> and the, the people that are committed to the purpose, and you're thinking? So we do harvest inside of a meeting, Yes. but often if you're a consultant going into a system, you may see things that they don't see themselves simply because you're bringing new eyes to it. So it's really helpful to take a next breath of harvest and say, what do we see? What's the, what's the meta perspective? If we actually comb through what we found out in that meeting, is there something that could inform us on a different level? And maybe we want to invite different people to that sense making because they're important strategically to us from a harvesting point of view and moving our, our so that's why we pop that out as a separate breath. Mm. And it can, all, and, and it's also something to decide. I mean, this meeting is also a meeting, so it's also something that needs to be prepared. Uh, and whatever the result or effect from this is also to step into action. We're gonna act on whatever came out. And. Uh, this might, this is not a, like a linear process always. Sometimes to like act is uh, to start doing more meetings or invite <coughs> more people. So if, if it's a longer process, it might go in terms like this. And I say that also because this is also a breath we sometimes forget, but to reflect if we're doing a process and we're acting on it, to also make space for reflection. What did we learn that we can that can help us be better when we take our next step, when we step into a new purpose? And before handling over to David, who's going to share his story, uh, how we apply this, uh, this is the it's called the eighth breath, and you notice it's only seven here because. The bigger one is the eighth breath. <coughs> this is the eighth breath, <coughs> which holds them all. And that's also where this kind of square perspective, to have an eagle view, because you can get lost in all the doing and hosting, but to keep, uh, keep the connection to why are we doing this. So I'm going to illustrate with a work that we started out to get me five times and then I continued uh, to show more, a bit more concrete what this can look like. Yeah. For, like from that story as an example, it, it reflects a pattern that can support you and us when we step into designing our processes. And it's also this clarity of what do we harvest from each breath <coughs> that remind us we, what we need to harvest commitment before we do anything. They said okay to our proposal. It was yeah. important for them, for us, to reach that. And we need to harvest clarity of purpose to move forward. And we need to, uh, from preparation, we will have clarity of content and process, but also people. And from the meeting, we have an uh, outcome a harvest, both tangible and intangible, that we decide for. And from the sense-making breath, or from the harvest breath, where we look into what more did we uh, learn, and what do we do with the outcome, we get another level of result. <coughs> and from acting, and from learning about acting, we also get clarity of wise next steps. And from going into reflecting, what, what did we really do? Like what you did here. We get long-term learning. And we get inspiration on what we're gonna do. So I think that the next step they will ask us from to, to involve other stakeholders in looking back what did we actually learn on this, this process. We'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, we, 